Two Planker Podcast. We're back. We're with Patrick Ring, P Ring. Have not recorded an episode in like two months now. So I, I'm happy to be back here. Happy to be interviewing you. What's up? Not much, man. Uh went to the bone zone this morning, skied with the homies. Um, and I got to fly out to Wisconsin to do a Milwaukee premiere daycare tomorrow or on Saturday. So fly out tomorrow, premieres on Saturday and Yep, stoked to be here. Yeah, dude. Okay, this is a long time coming because every fall, I'll tell you my journey with the with this interview. All right. So every fall we do the line episodes, you know, get a little hype around the company, talk to the athletes. It's a time of year to build some hype. And I remember talking to Pete Kukov last year in like August. So it was like August 2022. And we were doing his episode for the fall. And he was like, yeah. I've been working on this. I've been part of this video that P ring and Will Wesson are putting together. And that was the first I had ever heard of it. And I was like, Oh shit. All right. Next year we'll do the episode with P ring. And here we are. Time flies. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout outs to Pete. P was actually like my counselor at Woodward when I was a camper way back in the day. So it's funny to end up in this position with him at this point. Yeah. And uh, and if any, if anybody hasn't heard that egg episode, Pete Kukov, whatever number it is, it was from fall fall twenty twenty two. That's one of the best ones we've ever done. Pete is a Pete's a good dude. He gave a lot of valuable insight, um, and so hopefully you can give us some of the same. Considering you just were part of like a massive two year project, I guess we could call it that. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. It is what it is. It's a video and we're proud of it. So I'm stoked to talk about it. Yeah. So we're recording this on November 1st. The video came out yesterday on Halloween. What's the initial reaction, Ben? Is it what you expected? Better, worse? Uh, well, so we have Will in like all of our ear, mainly like mine and Kale's because we're around him a lot more but he's like don't get your expectations up like don't plan anything like we made a video and we're proud of it and that's all that matters but yeah i mean it's doing pretty well it's at like uh 11 views right now and it dropped yesterday morning at 9 a.m so i'm pretty stoked and a lot of positive feedback people seem to really like it and i'm super thankful for that sick yeah do you want to give like the kind of just like the general synopsis of what the video is? So the video is called daycare for anyone that doesn't know. And do you want to kind of explain it for someone that potentially doesn't know about it yet? I could take my best shot at it. So daycare, the name came about because Will is essentially like all of our daycare leader. He's like driving everybody, planning all the trips. And then he's also alongside me like filming and editing and he's like get in the van like (laughs) you guys have water you guys got everything you need for the day like blah blah blah. and we kind of just set out to make a movie with cool spots and film it and edit it in a unique way um And yeah, it's on YouTube. So if you're hearing about it for the first time here, you should probably stop and go watch it. Daycare. (laughs) Yeah, dude. It's so good. I'm like, I'm kind of like a Neanderthal when it comes to reviewing things. I'm just like, that's good or that's bad. Like, I loved watching this video. I forget what I, I sent you my initial reaction. But I think one of the things that stood out to me, like for my first time watching it, was like, you never knew what was going to happen next. It was very, it was like everyone's following the trend of like shitty quality in their videos. So my, my initial reaction as well was like, oh, I'm gl- really happy to be watching skiing in 4K right now. Um, it's funny. It's, uh, it's got a great cast of characters with a bunch of different styles. It's just good. It's just really, it's a good video. Um, I mean, what were your thoughts on the final product? It's, it's, it's. It's, I feel weird asking that because when you when you stick with something for two years, you have such a different view of it. But when you finally saw the final product, what were your thoughts? Well, first, I'm gonna I'm gonna respond to the mm-hmm. the shitty quality video trend and stuff. Mm-hmm. And 
Look, quite honestly, it's it's been a dilemma in my head. So I first off, my favorite camera in the whole world, VX1000 Mark One Fisheye. Skateboarding still uses it periodically, but that's like to me, four three footage and standard definition is the best way to watch any action sports. Second to that is the HPX 170 with the extreme fisheye. If you're going to go HD, you get an HPX 170 with the extreme fisheye. That is the HD footage that I care about watching. And I came across an Instagram page called extreme adaptations the year, like probably like three or four months before daycare started. I had no idea that it was going to become a thing, but I took a chance. I was like, man, I feel like your ski audience isn't stoked. Like you said, on lower quality videos, breaks my heart, breaks my heart so much. I wish I could just film on a VX, but I can't. And I took the chance. I DM the guy and he's like, yo, I'll send you an adapter. And the reason I chose the camera I have now, which is the CX 350, it's basically the 4k version of the HPX. So same raw Panasonic look as the HPX, but it's 4k. And I was like, all right, I'm going to take a gamble here. We're going to see if it works. And I am, it's the setup that after years I've been switching around setup since I was 12 years old. And it's the first thing I filmed on since I was like 12 years old that I was like, all right, this is my setup. I feel at home with this camera. And so that leads into the video. And this was a team effort and me and Will sat down and edited everything together. He was right by my side. I was like the button pusher and he's telling me what to do and I'm telling him what to do and we're back and forth. And it went super smoothly. Um, it went super smoothly, which was crazy. Me and Will kind of just had the same vision and put it together. And I'm I'm really, really proud of it. It honestly is a dream come true. And I'm yeah i'm i'm i don't know it's like hard to talk about but it's like now that it's done and i can watch it and like take a step back and it's finally hands off it's it's uh it's really sick i'm super mm. thankful yeah dude congrats that's awesome i think uh in terms of the shitty quality footage everything has its place but some stuff is more like it's just some stuff gets overdone. Like I think if you do it right, shitty low quality footage looks good. But if like it does, if it's not done right, it it just it at the end of the day it ends up being shitty footage that's also shitty quality. You know? Yeah. Well, that's my rebuttal to everyone's argument. Is like because they just go straight to like, oh, not the VX. Like we're not doing the VX, and it's like. No, I think a lot of filmers just don't know how to set up your VX correctly and do the colors right or mm. export it correctly. But like, you know, Eat the Guts is a great example of a super solid standard definition video in skiing mm. where it looks good. The footage looks good. It's not a VX. It's a DVX, I believe. But it's a super solid standard definition video. And then like Mozzie and 40 and Simon Knight also make some super sick VX1 Mark 1 standard definition videos. So there are people out there with good quality VX, but yeah, if you're if you're not setting it up right, it's uh it's a problem. You should watch the YouTube episode with Beagle and get educated. <laughs> you're, putting, you're making the VX name look bad because it's not bad it's an essential staple camera for our community yeah. whether skiers understand that or not skateboarders definitely do but yeah that's my camera rant well there's the great video essay by janka magazine and i think i i'm trying to get the full title of it right now the history of skateboarding's favorite camera and if you're looking to nerd out on skating that like anything that jankum posts is great 
But um, that video in particular is extremely, extremely good. Yeah, I've seen it like 10 times. <laughs> yeah, dude, I watch Jankum's videos all the time. Um, so anyways, actually, I'm glad I brought up Jankum Magazine because I wanted to bring up skateboarding. So in the New Schoolers interview, you mentioned that you wanted the video to have a skateboarding feel to it. And in that, you said... Like, there's a lot of fucking hijinks and antics and funny stuff in skating videos. They don't take themselves so seriously, and they don't try to be artsy all the time. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if you want to speak on that or talk about how that plays in with the videos that you make, but I thought that was really interesting. I think everything has its place. Like, I didn't want to – I guess I sound a little bit like a hater be like, no one cares about the artsy shit, but I was just trying to say that in terms of the video we were like all right we're giving them like 95 percent skiing and like three to four percent funny stuff and then one percent like stuff that's like oh my god it's a dog or oh it's this or that and then like one percent like all right there's some super eight or like city lights but videos can kind of overdo it but with the skateboarding thing i grew up a skate filmer i would go to the skate park and film my friends and that's how i became a filmer and i've been fortunate enough to um keep filming skateboarding kind of on a more professional level for lack of better term i hate using that word but um one of my good friends i grew up with jake alardi he's on the u.s olympic team and i've been filming parts with him for years and i had the opportunity to film my friend tyson bowerbanks uh welcome to the protein part for almost skateboards and i just binge watch skateboarding and they're pretty standardized in like hpx with the extreme or vx 1000 mark one and the videos the good videos keep your attention the entire time with funny stuff and everything and sometimes like i like like i'm a film major and i'm a filmer like i love super 16 i love super 8 but it has its place and sometimes it can be used in a way that enhances the video and other times it just loses people its attention so in terms of daycare we went with that skate look i upgraded to 4k to kind of appeal to a broader ski audience and then super fast pace tried to not use double angles of shots or show something twice like we wanted it boom 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 don't know what's coming next mainly just because that's what keeps your attention because if you know what's coming next like if there's like three angles of the same trick or something it's like you're kind of just blowing it the audience is going to get bored whereas if it's like clip clip funny stuff clip blah blah you don't know what's coming next the audience is just gonna be drawn to it and i think a lot of the thing that i'm stoked on that me and will consciously paid attention to creating this was all the funny stuff and extra stuff outside the skiing is just important to the actual ski clips and a lot of people outside of skiing like my parents or people who like don't ski we're super stoked on the funny stuff too. Mm. And I think that keeps everybody around versus like just the ski nerds who want ski porn and strictly the shots. Mm. Well, I think this is something that I've learned recently just, um, just working. Cause I, I, during the fall, I'm like completely in like make money mode, like corporate television mode. And so I tell people like what we've been up to, like, like what I was up to all summer. They're like, Oh, what'd you do? I'm like, Oh, I was like, I was at hood and then mammoth basically the entire summer. And they're like, what the hell is that like? And trying to explain the ski community to people outside the ski community is impossible. And you can't, and and if you show them videos, like without the, without the color shots, like without the, without the B roll and without the funny shit, without like the stuff that captures the culture, they don't get it. They're just like, okay, it's a bunch of people skiing. Like, I don't get it. But if you show, like, if you show the personality behind it and the people interacting and just all the bullshit that comes along with everything, that's when they, that's when like the, the culture gets driven home. Like, oh, okay, I get this a little bit more now than I did before. But if you show them like ten clips, they're like, I have no clue the con- like what any of this means. It, it's just nothing to them. 
Yeah, well, that's why you look on Instagram and you see what's popping off. And it's the stuff that normal people can relate to. Like Mm -hmm. if the ski community is too small, like you can be doing cool tricks or technical tricks. But unless it's like a mega flip or like the homie Adam Burton, this shot was genius in the Vex video. He walked up the milk crates, dropped in and the Brighton challenge reel. That was sick. That was the everyone at the premiere was going nuts, but Mm -hmm. obviously that's going to blow up like everyday people can relate to it. But yeah, like you did a cool trick on a street rail and your friends in Salt Lake City are like, man, that was so sick. That was so sick. But like so and so sees in, they're just like, oh, whatever. But then you see like a million spins or a million flips or whatever, and your everyday person can relate to it more and yeah that's instagram is just a good example of what your everyday person is looking for in skiing and not necessarily the ski community itself always Mm -hmm. yeah i don't know i think oh this is really yeah it's it's an interesting topic because it's like well what audience are you appealing to like you know a lot of people would say well who gives a shit what the general public thinks like if if you're in the if you're in the scene if you're in the community then the sh- then the clip should speak for itself cuz you should understand why it's difficult and you should understand why it's impressive and you should understand the history of the spot if that spot warrants it and uh but if you want something to blow up it needs to appeal to people that aren't like super nerds about every shot you know so it's a tough balance depends it really depends on who you want your audience to be i will say this Will is anti-Instagram for the video where two days in now and he's like, no one's posting an actual clip until two days after the movie drops minimum. That's like the rule. And everybody's hitting me up because I'm like the filmer middleman. Like, can I get my clips? I'm like, no, yo, like you got to wait. Like, Will will not be stoked. But what I'm stoked, I am so hyped on this, honestly. We have posted like, pretty much the worst shittiest quality iPhone pictures to Instagram and it's like daycare is live and we are getting no likes no love on Instagram but everybody's got to go to YouTube to watch it and so instead of it's it's somehow working like where I was like at first like oh man we're not posting clips is anybody gonna watch this video it's doing pretty good on YouTube right now and I'm like this is awesome currently a day and a half after we dropped the video, we have the worst Instagram presence of a video that's dropped in a long time, but YouTube's doing great. And as a filmer who has always cared about filming, filmer and skier, who's cared about filming video parts and full length content for so long, it's finally like a breath of relief. Like, all right, you don't have to post your clips on Instagram to get the views. YouTube will bless you if you do a good job. And uh, I hope uh, I hope that more people can follow that trend of not just posting your best clip straight to Instagram. Mm-hmm. If you go to New Schoolers, this is also, I mean, who who even knows how much New Schoolers drives traffic at this point. But if you go to New Schoolers, daycare is the top two article or the top two pieces of content. Like it's the same thumbnail right at the top for the interview with you guys and then the actual video itself. So you're being blessed in that it looks like it, it's at least being presented as a really big deal. Yeah, I'm I'm thankful, man. I'm super I'm super stoked. Go watch the full video on YouTube. I hope that we keep the trend going to not post the actual clips on Instagram as long as possible. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's not even dude. It's just the world we live in. Like you can't even blame people for posting stuff on Instagram. Like a, a lot of times it seems like that's what the companies in this industry want. And sometimes it's like, you don't, it feels like full length videos don't get the shine and Instagram is all that the industry cares about, but you can always just, you know, (laughs) Will would tell you to work harder and make a better 
uh, YouTube full length project. And I'm stoked uh, that that's the case with this one. Mm -hmm. What, speaking of Will, so you get to work very closely with Will and uh, Will Wesson, that is for anyone that is, has confused, is confused at all. (laughs) And how old are you? 24. Hey, perfect. I'm 25. We both grew up watching Will Wesson skiing. So what was it like for you? getting to work closely with him after years of watching him and respecting him. And then all of a sudden you're like literally sitting right next to him, editing a full length. I mean, lines first street video, full length street video ever. Like just talk about that. Talk about uh, what you've learned from him. Like it's, it's gotta have been like a really intensive process. Huh, man. Don't meet your heroes. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Um, I had to. I had to throw that in there. No, Will is the goat. Seriously, like it's a pretty crazy. I'm just gonna run through the process of how this yeah. all came out, uh, time wise because timeline wise because that's the easiest for me to recollect it. But I so. Flash forward a couple years back, I was filming with Gavin and Ethan Swadberg for Strictly's August Light project. And, um, well, that was funny because Gavin was like, I like start, I like helped him out a spot early season. And then they, uh, Gavin and Taylor were coming to Wisconsin to help Taylor film for her real ski. And that's when I really became close with uh, Taylor, started to become close with Taylor. And yeah, Gavin was like, yeah, you could get like four shots for this movie. Like you should aim to get like four shots. And I'm like, all right, word. And first spot of the year was this redirect spot. It's like a red rail into a wall. And I took like 40, 50 tries and was doing lip slide, like back swoop off the rail into the wall tranny uh, and got that. And at that point, that was definitely the best clip I had ever got, like, right off the bat. And that set uh, that year off. Gavin was like, oh, man. So then it was, like, it was on. I was like, I'm getting as many clips for this as I possibly can. And alongside that, I was filming Slanche, which was my solo part for the year. And that whole year filming with them, first off, shout-outs to Ethan Swaberg, Gavin Rudy, Taylor, they are the shit. I love them all and owe a lot to them. Just case end point. But while I was filming that year, I was like, man, I want to make a part that makes Will proud. Like, I want to slide wood. I want to slide knobs. I want to be creatively and throw some like tech bigger shit in or whatever. And um towards the end of the year film that kept filming and towards the end of the year the most gutter dudes most gutter strictly crew came to town um came to milwaukee and i was like spot tour guiding them which was super sick they're all the shit shout outs all of them and they're like yeah get a clip for most gutter or whatever and at first it was like milwaukee was low tide at that point milwaukee wisconsin I'm from like 50 minutes away from there and the snow was melting when they showed up, but I'm like, all right, we're going to put you on. And they did pretty decent. I think they got like six to 10 clips somewhere in there for most gutter in Milwaukee at like the last four days that you could possibly hit street there for the season. And they're like, all right, you got to get a clip for this. And it was, uh, Zayner does like a wall ride to switch into a tranny and, I was hitting it with them. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's like sick. It's my shot. And it, it's crazy going into this, too, because the whole year before that filming Word is Bond, I'm like, damn, Strictly so sick. Like, I want to, like, film with them someday or something. And then it just happened. And then this year I'm, like, thinking, like, I want to ski like Will. And then it kind of just, like, happened again. It's like I think about that a lot. It's really trippy or I, like, think – about something and then all of a sudden it happens but back to the 
redirect spot, I was doing a 270 into it and was getting like really close, like bases on the wall sliding down. And Zayner was like, damn, you're about to one up me. And I'm like, man, what the fuck? Really? Like, that's crazy. You're Sam fucking Zayner. Who's shout out to Sam. Good homie. And right after he said that next hit blew my ACL for the second time. And honestly that night I took it well. I was just like, I just blew my knee. I'm like, whatever. Second time, same knee. Fuck, man. And it was like, I was really that slanche year. Like, if I could have got the last couple of clips for it, that was the first time I was really on a roll where the clips were coming smooth and felt like I had met the right people in this shit and blew my knee. And that was just like heartbreaking. But, anyways, we'll talk about that later. But, flash forward, moral of that whole rant is that the whole year I was filming, I was like, Will, I want to make a part Will's proud of. Go through ACL surgery that whole summer, blah, blah, blah. And now I'm in my final semester at University of Utah, which I went and got a film degree. And I went to college to make the best ski and skateboard video possible. I molded my degree. It's like, history of rock and roll, history of rap, editing, sound, blah, blah, blah. It was like, I'm going to college to make the best ski or skate video I possibly can. Because my parents were like, shout out to my parents, love y'all. But they were like, you're going to school. And I'm like, fuck, I just want to ski and film skate videos. That doesn't help me make those. But I was like, I'm going to make it help me make those videos. And Every single class I took was revolved around that, but it's my final semester and I start running into Kale Simperman at the library, University of Utah, who is uh, an old friend of mine from back in the day, from when I first started coming out to Utah as a kid. And I knew Kale was uh, doing RCFS with Will at that point. And I had met Will, I got a couple clips in the Traveling Circus episode, like a couple of years prior to that. But, you know, I'm not at that point, I'm not just going to hit Will Weston up like, let's film a movie, like blah, blah, blah. But I started running into Kale like every day and in between classes, we were just hanging out at the library, which was also funny because like a side note, like just randomly Garrett Whaley was also going to school there and he's like editing the child labor movie at the library. And so like University of Utah is just a bunch of skiers. If you want to be a skier, go to University of Utah in Salt Lake City. But yeah, basically I uh, started running into Kale and he's like, yeah, what's up with you? How have you been? And over the course of like the month, it was like, yeah, I've been... Kale's like, yeah, I've been uh, filming street with Will a little bit. We went on like a couple trips, got a couple clips, nothing crazy, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, like, I don't really know what's up. I was at a pretty weird point in time where I didn't have a crew. The strict guys were talking about letting me film for a delete a little bit. And I really wanted to go on a trip with them and, I got invited on a trip, but they had popped up. So I had to turn it down, which uh, sucked because I, I love those dudes. That would have been such a fun trip to go on. But yeah, I ended up telling Kale, I'm like, you want, I was like, you guys think you need a filmer and like want to try to make a pretty legit video. And through that, that's when like, I was in an entrepreneurship class my last semester and like, was like learning about making companies and shit and i'm like fuck it ski x 4k slap that on some hoodies let's make some phones on edits let's do it and through kale uh started filming with will and him and everybody else i think kale's shoulder was kind of messed up at that point so kale couldn't ski early season quite yet but can i cut yeah. it real quick i'm gonna cut it real quick so that was the origin of Ski X 4K. It was an entrepreneurship class project. Yeah, well, I was like, damn, like I should. Well, actually, so I had made the Instagram a while ago 
And I'm a I'm a flex this real quick. Back to the VX1000. I got the Sony VX1000 murdered out black camera with the Mark One. When I die, this shit's getting buried on me, like on my chest. Unless I have a kid that's a better filmer than me, but he's got to be, he's got to be good. I'm not giving this camera to someone who's not good at filming. But um, I had to Instagram Ski X One K completely ripping off GX1000 because I was like, oh, GX VX Ski X, dude. That's 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 the next step, and. Then I got the 4K camera and I was like, man, that Ski X 1K name is sick. Like, I fuck with that. And then I got the 4K cam. I'm like, oh, Ski X 4K entrepreneurship class. Boom. And I started filming some Bone Zone edits with Will and then ended up uh, being the filmer, becoming the filmer for the RCFS series, which is a cabin in southern utah that is run by wasatch academy and they let us film ski videos there and will have been doing it prior but i came on board two seasons ago as like the filmer for that and man it was so sick i just go to the rcfs cabin and it's like a old cabin like you got it you got it like wood stove it's cold at night, so you need to heat the wood stove and then bunk beds in the room. And I'm just like sleeping in the same w- video or same like room as Will. And I'm just like, yeah, like let's film a street video. And he's like, yeah, I'm down. Like we could figure that out. And through running into Kale and Will at the cabin and stuff, that is how daycare originated. Word. All right. I'm glad. I'm glad I took us on that little detour. So you were saying Kale had a hurt shoulder. You're running him in, into him at the library, blah, blah, blah. You could pick up from where you left off before I derailed you. Well, yeah. So Kale was running into Kale at the library. Kale and I have a common enemy. And, you know, look at history when two people don't like someone or two countries don't like something, they they come together to do great things. And yeah, that's uh, that's another part of how daycare originated, spite skiing. <laughs> Would you care to say who your common enemy is? Pretty easy to figure out. I know. <laughs> I don't need to talk about it further. I, I would talk about it further, but like out of respect for the team, like so much love to those guys man like seriously and it's just also like not worth it because shit happened but all i gotta say is thank you because it worked out and we could leave it at that if you'd like (laughs) that's that so you and kale bond over over your uh Basically, enemy of my enemy is my friend. It's basically how you and Kel became friends. No, we were friends prior because I was sleeping in his basement a long time ago. Okay. Um, and then he got excommunicated. And honestly, it's like a crazy road because he got excommunicated. And what I hear is the story. And I'm just like, Oh yeah, like man, fuck that. Like I was a loyal kid. I was super loyal and down as fuck for Vishnu. I got it tatted on me. And I love that shit, man. That was like so bittersweet because like it was some of the sickest times, but how it ended, it's rough because it's like, man, like it was so sick. It ended shitty, but that was, like, so essential for my development as, like, a human being and this video coming about and, like, kind of just growing up. You know, things aren't black and white. Like, I played my part. I'm not innocent, but shit happens. And, yeah, basically, I knew Kale from back in the day. He got cut out 
I was loyal to Vishnu and I was like, oh yeah, like kill, like that guy, like Ramrama. And it's kind of funny. I remember running into Kale at the U campus. It might have been the library, I forget. And I was living with Luke Roberts at the time. And I was just like talking to Luke. And I'm like, man, yeah, Kale's a good dude, blah, blah, blah. Like, I really just don't want to end up like that though. Like excommunicated and flash forward uh a couple months it's i'm in the same boat <laughs> like fuck dude no way like that was so foreshadowing but yeah like i said it was sick reuniting with him because now it's like after two years of filming this video and everything he gives me so su- kale is like the group therapist in daycare because when you're filming street any crew there's arguments there's shit happening and kale was always like my voice of reason where it was like what's going on blah 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 because yeah and he just he's given me so much solid advice and helped me out so much and honestly i'm so fucking proud of him because the big thing running into him at the library was the homies at vishnu the, we're gonna cut that part out but the the homies that uh, no fuck it the homies the homies at vishnu would be like oh yeah kale skiing wasn't that good or like blah 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 and i went back and watched the footage i was like because i was like running into kale and i went back and like watched his clips and i'm like man there's a lot of potential here i think a lot of the clips just weren't filmed correctly for his style because The style of skier and the style of filmer coincide 150%. And I was like, man, I think like Kale skiing is sick. Like I think if he was filmed on an extreme, specifically an extreme lens or like kind of strobecky, more zoomy and on the face to skis, I think he could make a really good part. And his clips in daycare is some of the standout clips and he disappeared off the map, dude. Like he, I think he quit skiing for like a year, did some river guide shit and he came back and made that. And we all have will to thank for this. It's not just a case of kale. It's a case for everybody, including me. Will holds everybody to the highest standard. And Will was like, you, he's like, no, that's not good enough. Cause the whole Kale's Kale just skis on whatever the fuck he wants. He's like, all right, whatever. Like let's ski on this little turtle in the ground. And then Will's like, no, it's not good enough. It's like foot off the ground. But then we go to Toronto and it's two frogs, like 10 feet away. And Will's like, you can ski on that. And through a mixture of Kale being filmed correctly and him bossing up because his clips are fucked. Like that switch zero spin he did specifically is insane, especially hit his head twice trying that. And Will, spot God, spot police, him being like, this is good enough, this is valid, and kind of helping everybody finds what find what fits their skiing the best. Uh, I'm really proud that we came together and Kale is back skiing in the streets looking better than ever Mm -hmm. you mentioned that certain types of skiing need to be filmed a certain way do you have any other examples of that okay so it's really hard to put into words because can you think of an example of somebody that is filmed properly I mean, it's not properly. It's just like Mango and Brady, they're a team. Mm -hmm. And they are a good team. A top-notch, elite fucking team. I think ON3P4 that Ollie filmed, top-notch. Zoot Space, same thing. The skiers and the filmers match. And 
I don't know. It's like it's kind of diff. Like someone like Mango, like he's just so fucked up that anybody can film him and it's gonna be crazy. Like it doesn't have to be a specific style because his real skis with Ollie filming it are so sick. But then you go to Brady, who's a also a great like one of the best filmers ever, but completely different style from like Ollie, who's more skate snowboard style, and he looks great. But then there's some people like. Kale is a unique person because of the spots he hit. His spots are always creative in like some weird way. And they just need to be filmed on like a fisheye or rolling fisheye or zoomy. And that's just the only way to explain it. Because if you have a super wide lens and you can see everything that's coming or you're like zoomed all the way out, then it's just boring. It's just, I don't know how to put it into words as much Mm -hmm. but it's kind of just something that i inherently noticed from being nothing short of obsessed with making full-length videos whether it's in particular street videos whether it's skateboarding or skiing and then i also help film snowboarding and shit so i'm just looped on the streets and that's that. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna switch it up a little bit and uh, take a little side route. So it seems like you watch a lot of different content from a lot of different action sports. What community's putting out the best content, and like who's got it dialed when it comes just to the videos that are coming from from the community? Because I've been ex- I've been spending more time in California. I've been more exposed to like the the surf video scene. And just that whole, just that whole content farm. I've been watching a lot more, like a lot more skating lately. Um, so I'd like your thoughts on that. Sour Solutions, as far as skateboarding goes, in particular, Sour Solutions Two and Sour Solutions Three is probably my favorite video mm. right now. Um, just super good VX video, super creative skaters and. Uh, Gustav Tonneson, he not only films the videos, but he has some of the best clips in the videos as the filmer. And that's what I watch the most. But I kind of watch everything that comes out on Thrasher. As far as ski videos go, I watch uh, I watch everything that comes out in skiing. Like, I at least watch it once. I don't always re-watch it, but as far as, like, snow content goes, I watch a ton of snowboarding. And uh, WAP in snowboarding, the WAP crew, Sammy Lieutenant and Neil Shack, love that dust box video is super sick. Uh, anything Colt Morgan films, top-notch filmer. Um, but, yeah, I just like watching videos – GX 1000, obviously huge inspiration. There's too many to like list. Like I could just go on and on and on, but basically anything filmed on a VX one Mark one or a HPX 170 with the extreme lens or my homies or anybody in skiing, that's what I'm paying attention to. Mm-hmm. So based on what you like about those other ones, like how do you think skiing can improve? Because I think – I didn't answer the previous question. I think skiing has got one of the worst content communities. I, lo- I still love it. But if you look at something like – if you look at the skateboarding community and you look at how much people care, not only are the videos – just there's just better quality videos, more entertaining videos, but the the culture around skating too, like we were talking about the Jankum, the Jankum Magazine YouTube channel – those people care about the heart of skating more than anyone cares about the heart of skiing. They will tell the history of skiing of skating in a way that like skiing hasn't even begun to scratch the surface of storytelling. And, um, that's, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm a behind the scenes guy. I like stories. I like profiles. I like biographies and like skating just cares way more about all that stuff. So I want to see like what you think we could learn from all those different communities. Yeah, it's a frustrating topic because, like I said, I grew up a skate filmer. Mm -hmm. I grew up in my head like I am a skier and a skate filmer. 
And that's how I think about my life and everything. And so I am frustrated with skiing and I, it's just, it's just never going to be skateboarding. Like the socioeconomic shit and skiing and stuff like the economics behind skiing, like in the fact that skateboarding, like has the culture, like if you are doing tricks in the skate park, they don't count. Like you have to go to the streets and do the trick and you have to film video parts and blah, 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 blah. Skiing doesn't have that. First off, skiing street is a whole lot more work than filming park. Same with filming backcountry. I don't do any of that, but as much as I used to hate on it as being like a Midwest rope toe kid and growing up in Wisconsin where that, side of skiing just never seemed like a possibility to me uh i always looked at it like okay if i'm doing a trick in the park i've in the park i have to bring it to the street and skiing just doesn't have that and as far as the content side of things a lot of brand they're starting to come around you know it's really sick that daycare is like the first unofficial line skis team movie and then ON3P is putting out team movies and credit to Vishnu. Vishnu is putting out team movies, team street movies. I think it's on the upswing, especially this year. There's a lot more street content, but skiing, it's always been a lot more crew based. Skateboarding is crew based, but then the companies also want full length video. So you have the best of both worlds, whereas skiing to me, a lot of the times people put too much focus on Instagram and like the Instagram views and the Instagram clout, at least the companies do. And then street skiers, like all the, some of the sickest underground street skiers, like look at like jet skis and zoot space, like jets. First off, how can I forget jet skis? They're probably making the sickest team video it hasn't come out yet 2025 i think but that's a great example of like okay they're making team videos but all the companies doing that are like the underground teams and so it looks like the future of skiing is heading in a direction because when you look at where things are going and you look at the newer companies doing all these videos that are street team related it looks like things are going in a great direction but you know, at the same time, that's just the world. While street videos take a long time to make, they take a year minimum to do. You can't just bust them out. But meanwhile, the world is going towards TikTok and Instagram and the short form content. Companies just want content, 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 content to post. But so it's like it's like a balance where it's like this is what's pushing the sport but this is what companies need in the short term. And it's like a balance. And I just, yeah, I'm super thankful that line chose to support daycare and prioritize that. Um, I think that's a huge step because I think line is a bigger, more reputable company. And for them to back a unofficial team street movie, that's huge. I think things are looking great. We're going to stay positive and optimistic but yeah, I think just people should focus more on filming full length content, take your tricks to the street, take your tricks to the back country. And if the community rallies and they stop caring about the Instagram shit, then this is what's going to be prioritized similar to other sports. Mm -hmm. Man, it's really, yeah. Yeah. This is, a a loaded, game. this is a loaded topic, dude. This is, it's a big old game. It's trying to figure out. At the end of the day, it's just about views and just about just about. Remember. But I think really, I don't know where where's this, where's the, where's the true scoreboard? You know, because it, is it like followers on Instagram? Is it views on a video? You know, is it is it re name recognition? I struggle with this personally a lot. Because if it were up to me, I would delete Instagram 
or my it is up to me ultimately but i'm playing the game of skiing where i feel like companies care about instagram and you need the followers and name recognition and like blah whatever that i personally don't care about like i'm i don't believe in that i believe in full length content and pushing skiing towards the direction of street skiing particularly that's like my niche of skiing if we're up to me I delete Instagram and just focus on edits and full length videos. Cause that's what I grew up on. You know, I grew up on level one and stepped and the people that I respect are like Will Wesson played in Villa. There's a lot of other names that I could throw in there, but that's what I want to be. But it's funny, you know, cause I have these clips in daycare and I'm very, very proud of that. This was like the, first time I think I can say that I truly gave a project like my all and made it through the end without getting hurt and stepped my shit up a notch as a skier. And I could just go post my best clips on Instagram and get, you know, a little short-term gratification. But then I have Will in my ear and Will's like, We're not posting anything. If you have any self-respect for yourself, you're not posting your best clips on Instagram till minimum months after. And that's something that I want to honor because that's what I believe in. But it's rough, man. I have conversations with everybody. I have one of my best friends who I grew up riding with, Sam Anderson. If you're unfamiliar, he's like rising in street snowboarding he's underground from the midwest born on the rope toes never had a coach and i learned how to hit street with him but his clips sinister films um filmed by alex havey their shit is gnarly they are hitting the biggest stuff and sam's a little more like on the man like it's the game we play like why would you not post like your better clips to Instagram and capitalize on what's happening with daycare. And I'm like, man, Will's going to be bummed. Will's going to, you know, be upset about that. And I care more about, I care about his opinion almost more than anybody else's because, you know, childhood hero, one of the best at what he does. And he took a chance on me, a huge chance a huge chance on me to not only film in this, but ski in this and editing this, you know, he blessed me. Like he edited this with me. He put my clips in good positions in the video. And I just have too much respect for him to just go post my best clip on Instagram. And if that's going to sacrifice getting sponsors or something in the future because I don't have the Instagram followers, but it's in the video and I can back stuff up. Then to me, that's whack. And you got to be the change that you want to see, even though I could just post it on Instagram and get that fucking clout. (laughs) People will be stoked. I'm, uh, I'm not going to do it. I will keep posting my shitty iPhone clips mm-hmm. and do what I got to do. Cause that's, I care about the street video, man, the street video or the pow video or the full length video and skiing should be the Holy grail of the community. But you know, things went social. So the other side of it is people aren't buying videos anymore. So it can't be like that. And everybody wants it. And that's why Instagram and short-term satisfaction is so valuable to companies nowadays. It just sucks for people because this daycare is like a passion project. It's like my baby with and Will's baby and everybody's in it, baby. And you put so much passion and love and energy into it. And then it's like, all right, post it on Instagram. <laughs> It's like, oh man, but we're like, go watch it on YouTube, dude. Like, I don't, that's, I could go into a wormhole about this. And it's like, I want to emphasize, like, I, I have, I'm very opinionated. I have very strong views about skiing, but that's not law. And everybody's just playing a game to try to figure out how 
they can ski as long as possible and get their skiing funded. But yeah, honestly, shouts out to all the people that are filming full length street projects and aren't getting a dime and they work construction or they work some shitty job and take winter off to do it exactly how they want it. Those people in my eyes are like the sickest people in this fucking world that isn't real called freestyle skiing because this salt lake city ski scene is not real dude like i'm telling you it's not real life i love it (laughs) i love just uh dude honestly god bless anyone that works construction holy shit we need you guys and i'm telling you right now it ain't gonna be me doing it somebody's gotta do it and i salute you if you're doing it yeah uh Matt Wonderlick in Minnesota, him and his homies. Matt, let's let us all stay at his house during the filming of daycare. Like me, Will, Reagan, Kale, just like sleeping on the floor. Me and Taylor did a trip there. Dasha ended up there. Andy ended up there. Like Matt Wonderlick needs to give the biggest shout out ever. Like he is the man. He makes the roads in Minnesota, dude. Like he is in the off season. He is making the roads in Minnesota so he can take the season off and film street skiing. That dude is the shit. And then same with childhood friend of mine, Danny Sokol, another uh, one of my closest friends who I grew up hitting street with. He's actually, he he's at a couple different jobs right now. He is a garbage truck driver, bro. That is the sicky shit. Danny's driving the fucking garbage truck around Milwaukee. It's like, bro, I'm finding spots. It's so sick, broski. And he is like one of the most underground snowboarder as it gets. His parts are in the American dirt videos, Milwaukee snowboarding. And that's the crew that raised me in Wisconsin. Those are, I was on park crew with them as a kid. I was the, I was one of two skiers that they filmed. Ian deleted the video of me because he's like, man, I can't have snowboarders knowing I film skiers. <laughs> but the American Dirtbags and Danny Sokol, those dudes are like who raised me. And that's why I owe a lot to them for like, man, like that's what brings me here is I was raised by a super raw underground snowboard crew in Wisconsin that only cares about street snowboarding and Biggest shout outs to Danny Soko for driving the garbage truck. And he's the first in one in line at the end of the year when winter comes around and be like, yo, lay me off, lay me off. Like I need to be laid off. And he just films a snowboard part and his shit is fucked up, dude. Like his clips are hammer. So shout outs, Danny, my man. Word. Yeah, dude. I love snowboarding videos. I had never understood that for a long time when I, I would have people on the show and they'd be like, I actually watch a lot more snowboarding than I do skiing, but I'm starting to get it. But to be fair, this, I mean, this fall had, there's been some hammers and uh, I don't know. I've, t- I've talked about on the show recently. I've agree with you. I think skiing's in a great place. So that's getting better. There's still a ways to go. I think I was just talking about this in the last episode with Dylan's with Dylan um, powder videos still have, miles and miles and miles to go before they are even remotely interesting in my opinion like most powder videos oh my are God. like <laughs> just i just don't like them dude i just don't like them like the best i'm gonna say this right now the best powder content i've seen was pushing peas this last season oh man <laughs> yeah i want i don't Push need it's not the tanner hall movie it's the pushing pea movie yeah. <laughs> oh my god i was at the premiere for that shit dude and the intro that push and p gave for that was so good he gets on the mic he's like bah, 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 and push and peas is brighton's character that they didn't ask for but they need yeah and dude, it's yeah, just hijinks yeah, I, bro, I need, like, a oh, get, <laughs> powder videos need a little bit of edge, dude. Like, not everything in powder videos needs to be so damn artsy. We get it. You have snowmobiles. We get it. It's beautiful. We get it. And it's, like, majestic. And you're jumping into powder and everything's soft and great. Give me something gritty. Give me pushing peas, jumping off a, 
a 20 foot cliff at Brighton that he's not qualified to jump off of at all and set it to some dumbass music and like give me something raw and gritty and something that looks like you took someone from the streets and threw them in the back country i'm t- powder videos uh, unless i mean i'm completely I, open i'm completely open to being wrong i'm completely open to being wrong but that's where i stand right now oh uh, look dude reagan wallace has changed me as a human being shouts out reagan if this was like a year ago, dude, I'd sit here and talk so much shit on powder. Like you have no idea. Yeah. So much shit on a lot of things. I was bitter. I was bitter about the industry and the way things are going. Cause it's like, dude, I think daycare is my fifth street part. If you want to call it a part. Um, mm-hmm. And it's like, I've been playing that game, like full length content, full length content. And Anyways, I was just bitter about the industry and all the Instagram shit and pow skiing. I can't relate to it. I grew up on the rope toes in Wisconsin. No coach, just me and local snowboard crew that is like some of the biggest haters. God love them. I think haters are funny. I like people who talk shit personally, but hanging out with Reagan a little backstory at first i'm like reagan pops up on tell a friend tour the first year and will's telling me like he's gonna film street and i'm like oh man like reagan and i are polar opposite human beings like he fucks with instagram i could give a shit even though i play into it i've been trying to care more about my instagram recently you know posting shit but at first i'm like oh we got a little instagram skier in the house like what and Definitely was kind of hard on him. Gave Reagan some shit that first year and was like, blah, blah, blah. And then by the second year, Reagan started getting some clips and his clips are sick. Like he has a couple clips in the video, like the switch one 270 pretzel and the 180 50 pretzel 270 swap. I've never seen anybody do that much less in the streets. And then he's also hitting some pretty buck shit, like the gap through the tree to the down flat. I was so jealous when you did that, dude. I was like, man, that's the sickest spot. And basically by the second year, at, at I, I give Reagan a lot of shit, a lot of hard times the first year. By the second year, I was like, me and Reagan split off from Will and everybody towards the end of the year after Thunder Bay, our last trip at daycare. Me and Reagan split off and go to Matt's house to go on one final trip in Minnesota for daycare. And the first thing I do is I was like, Reagan, man, I fucked up. Like, I fucked up. Like, you're the man. He is one of the nicest people ever. He puts in so much work. And I just told him, like, man, I fucked up. I was giving you a hard time. Like, I appreciate everything you've done for this video. It's not happening without you. Like, we're having a positive environment for the rest of the trip because it was not always the most positive environment filming daycare with like i said all the passions and everything it's people butt heads about what's right to make the video as good as possible and that's pretty typical with hitting street i think a lot of arguments especially when you're on the road and with everybody and everybody cares so much about what you're doing but moral of the story Reagan also doesn't have like a hating bone in his body. Like he doesn't hate on shit and he would just call me out. I'd be talking shit about something. And he's like, why do you think like that? And he's like, gives me a whole new perspective. Cause I'm like, we just went to Norway together and I'm like, what's up with this Instagram shit, bro? Like blah, blah. blah. And he's just like, it's not cut and dry. The world's not black and white. Like I'm just trying to find a way to ski as long as possible i'm like oh word like what like everything that i think isn't law that's crazy no dude (laughs) being a hater is being a hater is fun until you meet like the most reasonable non-hater ever and you're like damn it's so peaceful being around someone that doesn't hate it's just so much more mellow but it's so much funnier being around a hater moral of this story it's like pow skiing like or Instagram skiers or yeah. 
anything that's not how I look at things, that's what makes the full length video so dope. It's like you have to have the shit that you disagree with to make this dope. But then I'm sure there's people on like this side that are like, oh, that's fucking whack or like blah, blah, Mm -hmm. blah. And, uh, you know, it's just everybody has their opinion. Everybody has their viewpoint on things. And, yeah, I could sit here and talk shit on pow skiing. But the truth is, is there's some really dope shit in pow skiing, too. Just Mm -hmm. like there's some really whack shit in street skiing or Mm -hmm. there's some pretty dope shit on Instagram. I I don't know if I'd personally go that far, but... (laughs) You know, there's cool shit on Instagram. There's whack shit. There's good and bad in every aspects of life. And we could sit here and be jaded and be like, blah, blah, blah. Like, this sucks. Or we could be like, all right, this is the world we live in. How do we get to where we want to go in that aspect or realm that we wish to be in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro. I agree. It's just like the Luke O'Brien episode. We talked about how he's got his own haters. And the conclusion is always different strokes for different folks. It's like, listen, not everything has to be your cup of tea. But I'm still going to hate on POW videos because it's just like, god damn, dude. Yeah. Still going to do it. Still going to do it. I, I like Dylan's new video. I really liked Mitchell and Tom's. Like, it was Mitchell's thing and then Tom skied in it and Robert – Rue shouts Robert. I met him in Norway. He's a shit. Mm. Ski with him a couple of days, but they like took a big tube to the back country. And I'm like, now I can relate to it all of a sudden. I'm like, yeah. bro, what? But with that being said, dude, I could, I'm not going to hate on powder because people are taking their skills to the epitome of what skiing is. Yeah. And I going to, be like the most stoked watching it. No, because that's not what I personally care about. I care about street skiing where it's like a groundbreaking street skiing video comes out like zoot space. I'm like, this is the dopest shit ever. I personally just don't pay attention to power. It's not my world, Mm -hmm. but I have a lot of respect. Like we're going to hit a spot for daycare and we were going to have to hike all the way up. I don't know if I would have made it to this spot because it's up Alta and it's like a porch that Will wanted to hit. <laughs> Sorry if I'm leaking the spot, Will, but I don't think anybody is going to put together what it is because Will's spot brain is superior. But I don't know if I was going to make it. And we got saved by the bell because I was complaining the whole way there. Like, man, how am I going to skin up this? Like, blah, blah. Snowmobiler drives by that nose kale and he snowmobiles us up to the top. But I wouldn't have made it. And that gave me like the respect where it's like, all right, man, like this is a light hike for someone trying to ski back country and things can be done. Cool. You know, you like, you can, I think of back to a lot of stuff. Will's done like skiing trees in Japan, like grinding trees and stuff. And You know, Mitchell's whale tail, rail tail video, that's super sick. And some of the stuff Parker White and Chris Logan and everybody's done, like Jonah Williams crushes in the pow, Swaz crushes in the pow, and it can be done sick. And I might not relate to it, but in my personal eyes, I don't like the people putting – or change that i don't like the aspect of skiing that's putting it all into instagram and like doing some corny shit that's gonna get a lot of views on instagram um call someone out call someone out what's a what's an example of instagram skiing that you hate dude bro come on you're putting me on the spot yeah fuck it (laughs) is so like i can't i'm not in a if you're gonna put this in here like i am not in a place like in the ski world like i just oh do you think i am but i'm still gonna say pow videos are boring and then the second i see any evidence otherwise i'm like pow videos are great it's it's very easy to take strong opinions if you uh if you if you're willing to change them rapidly 
Yeah, but he, I'll talk. I'll say something. But like, <laughs> fuck, dude, I don't know. man, shit. We, you're really putting me on the spot here. But he's also just playing the game. But it's a double edged sword because he's filmed one of the best street parts of all time, and it's can not only one, but like multiple legend. Then I see him all doing this stuff on Instagram, and it's like, man, you were like my hero. I feel like I know who you're gonna say. I'm not gonna. I don't want to say it, dude. Like I don't know, like, cause I'm not even in that realm. Like I'm. This is like, think here's the first thing I feel like I've done that's like kind of legit. You know, like I don't yeah. know, like just like, fucking dude, like yeah. But, like, I know you want the podcast views, man, but I can't do that. Like, that's a legend. Dude, it's all right. It's all right that you don't like Alex Hackle's Instagram. <laughs> man, Instagram <laughs> breaks my heart, dude. Like, <laughs> Instagram breaks my heart. Because the shit he's done in the streets is so fucked up. But then again, it's like. That's that's where the whole dilemma comes in, where it's like that's all that you see that, and you're like, that's like your idol and someone that you mm-hmm. look up to, and you're like, man, he's filmed some of the sickest street shit of all time, and now you're doing that. It's like, is that all the companies care about? Is that like really how you get to that point? This day and age, like, I don't know, man. Like, I I feel bad for calling him out it's like someone like an absolute legend but yeah. sorry it's been it's been it's been a discussion on new schoolers for a little while now yeah it's, the, it's, it's tough like, dude because at a certain point it. if you have the opportunity to get a bag like that and like literally support your your life through skiing in a means in a means posting stuff that the community doesn't always love i i don't know it's i think there's an argument that is completely justified, and then there's also an argument that you shouldn't even go there. But it's it's really just up. To, it's just there's no. It's not black or white. It's not a right or wrong answer. But I think people people certainly feel the way that you feel about that. That you're yeah. not expressing like a very out of the box opinion with that. I'm not expressing a very out of the box opinion, but it's just like. I don't want to hate on people. I don't want to like cause problems. I have had enough happen in my past that like makes things rocky with certain people. And Mm -hmm. I don't want to start beef. I'm over beefing, but if you're going to have beef, you should have real beef, which is where I draw the line. It's like, I'm not going to start some shit Mm. over some bullshit. Like I'm going to start some shit because I got fucked over Like that's where it's Mm -hmm. different. Yeah. No, it's all right, man. I think this is going to be a permanent discussion skiing going forward about the role of Instagram until something even dumber than Instagram comes up. And then it's everyone's going to be hopping on that. But I think this is going to be here to stay for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And also, let me add like some of the Instagram skiers, dude, like that I might not personally agree with their how they're presenting their skiing the medium in which they're presenting their skiing. I've met them or hung out with them and they're normally pretty dope people. They're pretty nice and cool, but it's just how they're choosing to do it. And honestly, sometimes some of like my favorite skiers who I look up to and I'm like, man, your skiing is so sick. Sometimes they suck. Like it goes both ways. Like, man, yeah, your skiing is sick and it's presented right. It's filmed right in your spot selection, trick selection, everything. It's great. And then you, you're you around them and you're like, man, you suck. But we're, we're not naming names. We're not going into this. <laughs> it's just to say like, yeah, not everything is so black and white. Yeah. There's some gray. Um I'd like to do some viewer questions if you'd like to do those, unless unless you feel like the the daycare story hasn't been told. But I feel like we're gonna we're gonna uncover some more with these. I think I do want to talk about some specific spots and like kind of talk about the journey of daycare because we talked about how we got there, but we haven't talked about the actual filming of it. 
Yeah, and that's good because there's a lot of people were asking about general questions, but about the spots. So I'd l- I like to hear about that. Word. Yeah, I'm down with that. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you could take it first, and I'll knock out the stuff that people were asking as you as you talk about it, because I want to hear how you how you've understood it and processed it in your mind, and like how you look back on the story of how this all came together and and how it evolved. Well, we can run it. Let's run it after the. Let's run right, it. Yeah. So I'll give you a prompt, and then maybe you could take it from here. Yeah. All right. So Sloppy Joe, what clip had the longest battle? Yours truly, right here. Uh, the three swap on the wood quad kink. My opener. Um, new scores is actually giving me the opportunity to do like a behind the scenes, my war style thing about it. Mm -hmm. So watch that when it drops, I'm still in the process of editing it, but it took four days and it was kind of like, we were in Milwaukee for telefriend tour. We had just come from Minnesota to Iowa to my house in Wisconsin and there's a different spot in Milwaukee I wanted to hit because it was kind of my turn because I I just love hitting hometown spots. Like I'm at this point, one of my main goals with skiing is to inspire the next generation of kids out of southeastern Wisconsin where I had people to look up to, but they never got like the sh- Now that I'm kind of getting this position, I'm like, all right, this one's for you. Like, hopefully some kid in Milwaukee, Lake Geneva area starts hitting street because they see what I'm doing. But we're in Milwaukee. It's my turn to shine because everybody's like, all right, Pat wants to hit his local spots that he's grown up staring at. And we go to a spot and Will's not vibing with it because Will – Will is the spot police. There's certain things he does not like, and he did not like the spot. And we're looking and looking and looking in Milwaukee, and there's nothing he's fucking with. And we go home, and I show him a picture of this wood quad. He's like, all right, why did you not show me this? We're going here. You're going to three-swap it. And I'm like, dude, what? (laughs) Like, I, like, I, I don't. Word. All right, Will, like, let's go. So we go. Granted, like the longest wood thing in the streets I had ever slid at that point is like a three foot fence, like in Slanche. It's like a down ledge to a three foot fence. So I haven't even like slid wood, ripped the edges out of my ski. It's super steep. And he's like, you're going to free swap it. And when Will tells you, you got to do something, it's like, all right, man, you got to do it. Like it's not an option. And day one, it was like me, Pete, Reagan, Kale. Andy and Will and I battled this thing for like four to six hours on day one did a back swap to switch slid it like 15 plus times because it was a battle to even like slide it like it's a long rail with steep kinks day one didn't didn't even pop the three swap swap off didn't even try it and I ate shit like flipped forward into the side and it wasn't that bad. I'm like laughing it off in the clip, but it's like, man, if I flipped into the stairs, like that's a, that's a problem. That's no bueno. So anyways, then all of them, all like uh, everybody except kale that I just mentioned has to go on to tell a friend tour uh, in Michigan or East coast. So they leave. Then I'm like, me and Kale stay in Wisconsin and, and Kale's like, I want to get a couple clips from Milwaukee. We're going to get you this three swap. And I just found out the other day that Will told Kale, like, make sure he gets the clip. So then we're in for the battle. So day two commences. I call up my friend, Jeremy, who films skateboarding in the Milwaukee area and Danny Sokol, who I previously mentioned. I'm like, Jeremy, I need a filmer. Danny, moral support, bro. Cause Danny and I hit spots together whenever we can. And, Day two was coming close, like tapping it, sliding to this side. Uh, Did one where it was kind of like right in front of my noses and go to forward and fell. And then it was on. I was like, okay, I can do this. Day three, we go to do day three. And Jeremy was like, I can only film at 2.30. So we pull up at 2.30 and 
the so a local snowboard crew uh who's not the dirt bags had poached the spot changed my drop in and lip around and there's huge chunks out of the rail where like i couldn't even slide it with edgeless skis with the chunks and then i had a meltdown because like i i i fucking lost it dude like i lost it like lost it called danny danny pulls up he is a grinder he buffs out the chunks in the rail we're like all right we're coming back tomorrow we're not poaching it and at this point milwaukee's storms don't last that long when it snows in milwaukee it doesn't stick around normally for like more than a week now it's like bare bones like drop in amount of snow in the landing no snow like anywhere else for day three because we pull up the day after the snowboard poached it then it's really on like i popped the three swap off probably like seven to ten times like in each day it was like a minimum four hour battle it was like minimum on the light side of things and third day Three swap tap, come off, three swap, blah, blah, back up to forward. I back up to forward at it or back up to switch like every day. And I do one where it's like down flat, down flat, three swap perfectly underfoot. And I just spaced. I didn't know whether to like take it to forward or switch. And I just landed sideways after like three swapping it perfect heartbreak that's when i really lost it and it started snowing in utah and kale was like it started snowing in utah a bunch the snow melted in milwaukee like i i'll go into this in a second but there it, there was a if i was gonna hit it for a fourth day it was gonna be like bare 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 bones because it was already bare bones kale flies home i uh i was like i need to clear my head go to yoga. I'm like, I'm going to yoga for the first and only time in my life. And the yoga instructor was cute. So I started kicking it with her, went on a couple dates after the snow melted. I went on a date with her in Milwaukee, which is like 50 minutes from my house. So close, but far enough where we're on this date. And all I can think about is like one thing is one thing on my mind. Is there enough snow at this quad kink to try this three swap again? So after our date, I just like drive and it's under a bridge in Milwaukee, like kind of sketchy area. Like don't want to, don't take a girl under a bridge on a date, but I just didn't, I like, was like, we need to take a detour and like pulled up to see if there's enough snow there to hit this rail. Cause that's all I could think about. And there wasn't, it was like, I could maybe take snow from, take snow from across the street. But at that point I was like off it, didn't get a second date, <laughs> like didn't get it. But what really matters is Milwaukee gets a freak snowstorm like a week later, Milwaukee gets a storm. Like it's on. And I was, uh, throughout the process of filming this, like I was the filmer. And so when I would go on trips and stuff, I would have to take a bit of a backseat with the amount that I would want to ski. And then when I wasn't on daycare trips, I would go on trips with my snowboard homies to like get my clips for the video. So I was helping film this snowboard crew, Sam Anderson, uh, Sam Anderson's crew, Sinister and Havy. I went on a trip with them. They pulled up to Milwaukee for the day from Madison and I helped them at like classic DFD. It's the 50th in state DFD. Oski did like a lip front three swap on it uh, this year in the Owen three P video, but they get their clips on that. And then Havy's like, yo, Pat, let's go light up this. Let's go light up this quad kink. And I'm like, let's uh, let's go. It's time to get this in lit it up and Havy's just like my guy dude like I don't know it's just so many there are so many signs on that day leading up to it and stuff and then that night I believe it's like the 48th try on the fourth day which was at night because we lit it up I I laced it and it was like I remember getting on the rail 
And it was like, oh, I'm falling off the outside. And then I don't really like remember anything. And then all of a sudden I'm like riding away switch into like the grass. And it's like, I just freaked out like four days of triumph. I was like, I can't, I couldn't, I had to ask KV if I like did it. I'm like, did I do it? Like, am I tripping? And yeah, so the blind three up on the wood four kink, that was a, or wood quad kink four day battle. That was the biggest battle for the daycare video. Hell yeah. That's a great story, dude. I like that. Yeah, sorry um, for you. There's a lot going. My mind's all over. There's a lot that's going on. I gotta tell everything. Well, fuck it. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, yeah, Luke O'Brien actually specifically asked about that that spot and the story behind it. So you covered that. Um, Shout outs, dude. Their video was sick. Shout outs, Cammy Will for lighting himself on fire. Uh, me and Kale went to the premiere for that and. Camden set himself on fire at the premiere, dude. Like after the video, and it was it was hijinks, dude. That was sick. But yeah, Luca, uh, I ran into him at parties and stuff in college and stuff, and he does some fucked up shit. He's a super nice kid. So shout out to Luke. Yeah, um, yeah. Shout out to Luke. Met him at uh, Mammoth. We ran an episode together. Uh, young Sizzla and uh, Sanzeri. Sanzuri, Sanzeri. They uh these guys are asking about Kukov dropping off the roof of the church. Give the backstory behind that one if you if you can. Oh shit. Well, which there's two of them. Like, are we talking like the, the mega- huge one? The huge one. I believe so, yeah. That's gonna have to be someone else. That is one of three spots that I was not at. And I was honestly pretty fucking pissed about that so first like i'm in, i'm on a at this point me and taylor went out to minnesota just me and taylor link up with matt wonderlick to film her some clips for the video so me and her go to minnesota are getting her clips and then kale reagan will and pete end up starting making their way across the country like a couple probably like five days after us And they end up in Sioux Falls, which is like you drive through Sioux Falls on the way to Minneapolis. So me and Taylor already scoped Sioux Falls. She's like, let's just go to Minneapolis. We can stay with Matt and get this done. So me and her are there. And it's the day before I'm supposed to go back to Sioux Falls because I'm in Minneapolis. I get the call like we're going to Sioux Falls. Will's like, you have to turn around. And I was like, bro, just come to Minnesota. What do you mean? Like, I don't want to backtrack to Sioux Falls. And when Will calls you, you listen. So Will's like, no, you're coming to Sioux Falls. I'm like, fuck, this sucks. I don't want to backtrack to Sioux Falls. But I, Taylor gets like her last clip on the trip. I hit a ledge to wire, which I was super stoked on. And when it came to editing the video, Will's like, no, that's not going in. Everybody's getting a clip cut. That's your clip. That's getting cut. I'm like, man. So I get this ledge to wire and I'm like super jazzed because it's like the biggest spot I had hit since I got my second knee surgery, biggest drop wise. And Will, I sent it to Will and I just don't get a text back. Like there's just no, no response from Will. So I drive back to Sioux Falls. I'm like, man, whatever. And I get there and they're like, Pete's like, dude, I hit this big ass church roof, blah, blah, blah. And they show me the clip. And I'm like, that's fucked. Did you film him getting up there? (laughs) I'm like, tell me there's a clip of him getting to the top. And there's like, no, it's like a group effort. We all had to help out. And I was like, no, like, what do you mean? Like, that's like the most important part is him climbing. Pete's a painter. He has a painting business and he paints houses. And so he's like skilled with a ladder, but he, they went to the store, got a massive ladder and he climbed up it in ski boots. And it's like, when you do that, it's like, you can't scope the spot, dude. Like he had to climb up and like assess like whether he was going to drop in on this. Like there's no doing that. Like you climb up, you're not climbing down the ladder. Like 
you're skiing down that shit. That's the only way you're getting down. And yeah, so I was super bummed there wasn't footage of that, but it's kind of sick that there's comments like, how do you get up there? It's like almost better that we don't tell people. Yeah. But if you don't mind me going on a tangent, so the other church thing, the opener where the guys like get down from there, I went to Denver, flew to Denver. Uh, I actually had an upgrade on my flight. My parents like upgraded me. I have first class. I'm like sipping champagne in first class on the way to Denver. And that trip was just me and Pete in Denver. And it's like a quarter pipe roof. And that's the first spot we hit. And yeah, the priest comes out with like a Bible and he's like, get down, you idiot. And I'm like, oh man, this is so sick. I can't wait to put that in the video. So that spot was crazy. That was sick to get done. And then one more side tangent. That was the church segment was the first thing that we edited for daycare. So I, my parents used to make me go to Sunday school until I sat them down and I was like, yo, I'm going to like get kicked out of this shit. If you make me keep going, like I have to go to school all week. And then I have to go to this on Sundays. Like, that's not fair. Like I get two days a week to ski. That's it. Like, I'm not going to Sunday school. Like I will ask them like whatever questions to get me kicked out if you send me back. But in Sunday school, they played that song all the time. That's the church song. So I was sitting in Sunday school, like listening to it, like all the time. And I'm on art list, like looking at music, like the first day me and Will go to sit down and I see it. And I'm like, no way. Like, this is rights free, whatever. Download it, put all the church clips over it. Church seg, other than a couple cross dissolves, we didn't change it from when we made it to the end of the video. That was the first thing we edited for daycare. I love that. I told I, I told you my the Mammothheimer story, or the first thing I edited was the puking montage. But uh, it's fun when you, like... I don't know. I, I used to edit a lot when I was younger and uh, just getting like one segment under your belt is really good for building momentum for the rest of the editing. Like just having like one, just one segment, even if it's small and like, and in my case, shitty and stupid, it gets you being like, all right, well, like, like we're making some progress on it. So that's cool that the church thing was like the first to materialize for the whole video. Yeah, I was like, man, I had to listen to this shit all the time. I'm making fun of it by putting all the clips we got on churches. Yeah. Oh, this song. And it, it stuck. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Raf Diaz asked an interesting question. He says, are there, are there any clips you didn't believe were possible? And I'm not sure what he meant by that, whether it, you didn't think it was possible in the moment or when you saw it after the fact, you couldn't believe your eyes. But uh, interpret that how you will. Dude, honestly, no, because Will wouldn't let us even try something that wasn't going to work. Like Will's had so much years in the streets and knowledge, and he doesn't want to waste time. He wants to get clips, and he will tell you, like, no, we're not doing this if he thinks it doesn't it isn't going to work out. Like, that's just how it is. Like, Will speaks, you listen. Um, if it's like bus factor, blah, blah, blah. And I don't know from like a bus factor point of view, like, yeah, I can't believe Pete did that roof church. We pulled up their cars in the parking lot. I'm like, you're just going to climb up here and do this. He's like, yeah, like sick. I'll film it. I didn't think that was going to happen. Uh, my three swap when the snow melted, I was like, I don't think this is going to happen. When Will first told me to do it, I was like, what? Like, I, I don't know if, like, I can I do that? Yes. But like, I knew what I was getting into. I don't know. Cause a lot of it is like, I have a lot of trust in the people I'm filming too. Like if someone says they're going to do something, I'm like, let's, let's get it. Like we're doing that. And so for me, it's like more like from a skiing side of things, like the bird, like the, 50 50 to ollie suicide i did that was when i nutted the front of the rail i was like i wanted to quit but 
honestly, Benny was there and I wasn't going to back down with Benny around. Benny was giving me some shit, giving me a hard time. Shout out to Benny for making me better. But yeah, it's like, it's just, I look at it like when I'm filming, I'm like, I never doubt the person. If somebody says they want to do something, they're going to do it. I'm like, all right, let's get it. Unless it's like, you're not getting speed for this. Or like, that's never going to happen from bus factor, like blah, blah, blah. But personally as a skier, it's like when you're trying something, it's like, man, like, fuck, should I quit? Should I keep doing this? Is this possible? Blah, blah, blah. And I know every single skier in the video went through that as well. So I don't want to sound like I'm discrediting anything they did because I'm sure everybody had that thought at some point in this video when they were skiing. But as a filmer, I look at it like, oh, they fucking got it. Like, whatever you know but as a skier i have that perspective that's like oh man do i got this like shit you know so yeah uh, yeah i think i trusted everything was gonna happen the way it meant to happen Mm -hmm. that's good uh here's another story prompt for you ryan voyan asked what's the funniest moment while filming the project Manchin, I don't know the Pete roof drop, Pete uh, quarter pipe drop off with the get down you idiot. I'm filming. I'm like, oh, like what? Like, that is the sickest shit. Or Taylor with the frat bros, whatever Mason. The Freemasons. Yeah. <laughs> that was so funny. We did the new schoolers interview, and I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, it's a Freemason building. That's Scientology, right? And we'll. <laughs> No, you idiot. That's like two <laughs> completely different things. Which is another Will's always correcting me. That's part of the daycare thing. He's, you know, I'm kind of like the daycare child of the video. I'll proclaim that. Like I'm the child that's like always doing some shit where everyone's like, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so much hijinks, like funniest moments like just kicking it in the van with everyone and i don't know man it's just so much shit but in the specific video yeah the the oh kale got hit in the dick with the winch rope on the sea ledge i hit i was like winching in and i threw the rope to the right and kale's to the left but there's a tree and the winch is spinning so i throw it gets wrapped around the tree and then it shoots in front of me and I get like a black whiff, like right in front of like my chest face area. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I choose to like fall. And then I hear Kale go like, ow, or whatever. And I just like kind of fell, like going pretty fast off a winch. I'm like, what are you complaining about? And like, look over, like, I just ate shit. Like, why is homie screaming over here? He's like, hit me in the fucking dick. And the winch rope went to the right behind the tree, right in front of me, straight into Kale's dick. And he said that, and in the clip, you see him walking away. He walked, like, pretty close to, like, a mile, like, maybe, like, half a mile to the grocery store. Like, he just up and left the spot after getting hit in the dick. He walked all the way to Loblaws, got his shit, and came back. And by the time he came back, I got the clip. But that's pretty funny. Like, bro got hit in the dick, and instead of, like, complaining or doing anything, he's like, how? Got hit in the fucking dick. And he just ups and leaves <laughs> left to the spot like, yeah thanks yeah. for the moral support kayla you're gonna leave me you left me there you left me in milwaukee dude like no i'm kidding Shot, i'm just giving kale some shit but yeah it was hilarious for sure yeah uh let's see dude we got so many questions i'm gonna we're gonna have to narrow these down all right all right are we gonna keep it real or are we gonna We got a few questions about how you went from Vishnu to line. Ooh. Yeah. Let's hear it. Let's hear the story. Man, so I, yeah, this is the Vishnu story. So I was getting shop flowed skis through Forefront. And my shop owner, Jason, who to this day backs me, shout out to BS Board Shop, Jason Richling. 
he kind of like grew up with Sturbenz or knew him. And he made like a contract for me as like a 14 year old kid that was like, you're writing for forefront and board shop. So I thought I was writing for forefront and in retrospect, like he just made this shit up, like and and got skis from forefront and gave them to me. And I was like sick. And I was filming that year. I filmed a ski mask edit at Alpine Valley with like, like ski mask over my face, uh, standard definition flipping off the camera being a little shit good video and <clears throat> one day while i'm like finishing that edit up this dude tyler burnt he's like man hey i know this dude emmett or whatever like he started this company vishnu and i'm like vishnu never heard of it that's like fucking stupid that sounds stupid like i'm getting skis from forefront like my shop owner says this shit's dope whatever brush it off whatever i go home that night and of course new schoolers nerd street skiing nerd and i go to watch my favorite video at the time and it's vishnu's gas they the vishnu crew had come to milwaukee to film their first video gas a lot of the shots were out of milwaukee and that's why i liked it but then i it, the title clicked because i've been watching the street video with like skiers in my local city i'm like this is so sick but I had no idea who it was and then it's like vishnu and it clicked in my head that the dude on the lift was talking about that and i'm like man whatever immediately sent that dude on the lift to d i'm like you got to get me in contact with these dudes. And I sent, got the Vishnu email, sent them a huge email that like, I like included my GPA in there is some shit. I'm like, I don't know what y'all care about. Like, this is what I care about, but like, yeah, I get good grades or whatever. And <laughs> like included like everything. I was like, man, these dudes are the shit. And for some reason, Emmett and Kale and them trusted me. <clears throat> and uh, they're like, yeah, we're, we're down or whatever. And that's when Emmett was like, yeah, uh, if you want to come to Salt Lake City and like stay at my house or film or whatever, like you can. And I was like, all right. Yeah. So I like, I was like, mom and dad, we're, I'm going to Utah. Like the ski company wants me to go film with them. Like I need to go. I'm like 16. And I think my mom had like a call with Emmett or something. And I found out later on that he was like super fucked up for the call. So I can't believe that my, my parents fell for it and let me go. Cause it was sick as hell, man. But like, if I was a parent, I would not send my kid to the Vish, the OG Vish New Egg Wars. Like that was, God I love my parents, but that was a terrible parenting call. Um, but they, they sent me and they almost weren't going to send me. I actually got caught smoking weed for the first time a week before I was supposed to go. And my dad, my dad's one of the few people I know that's never smoked weed in his whole life. And he's like, you're not going, you're not going to this fish new house. That's bad call. I'm like, no, this is my fucking shot. This is my shot. Like, you're not going to do that. Like, you're not going to kick me out. And he's like, all right, man, whatever. So sent me to the house, get picked up. And my first trip there, I was like, yeah, man, this is sick a street skiing company uh emmett's from wisconsin so i really fucked with that and they kind of welcomed me with open arms and all of a sudden before i knew it i was kind of like the vishnu kid i was like the little kid on vishnu like the in the beginning stages like watching the company grow and man i was like about it like i loved that shit like can't stress enough like that was so sick such a sick opportunity to have and 
got inspired to move to Salt Lake City because of it. And uh, yeah, I, I grinded this quad kink at like the Mormon temple at like 1 a.m. on like my senior year high school, like a couple years after. And I got an accepted to the U, University of Utah at that point after. And I was like, I just looked out into the city after I grinded this shit that Emmett and all these people have been like, everybody's tried, but no one's been able to do it. And I did it. And I was like, I'm moving here. Like, this is for me. This is for me. So I decided to go to the U. And um, yeah, so I end up at the University of Utah my freshman year. And I had already, I filmed a part for gas. I had a part or no, I, sorry. I filmed a part for, re, or I had some clips of recess. I filmed a part for harvest and which was one of the earlier Vishnu movies, uh, the year before I moved. And so I pull up at the U and I'm like, yeah, man, fucking Vishnu, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, I blow my knee in like December of that year like first year at the u basically the first month skiing before the season really started i blow my knee for the first time and that was tragedy like i didn't know how to handle it because i'm like oh man i just moved to utah for skiing and now i can't ski and um flash forward a couple months i had a girlfriend who like first girl that I like truly loved and shit dated her for like a year and a half and go into ACL surgery, get ACL surgery and a week into it. Uh, she hooked up with a NBA player on the Milwaukee bucks. <laughs> That's I'm fucked, 18 dude. years old. I'm 19. Like I'm a kid, like, you know, and I'd never questioned anything. I was always like, this is how things are. Blah, blah, blah. I'm, I have to sit in a a knee machine that like bends my leg for like four hours a day and a week into it for a, you know, five to six month process. That's what happened. And so that's not only could I not ski my whole first year, but that happens. That was like strike two. That was like, man, this sucks. And like in between that, in between the girlfriend and the knee tear, I had filmed a lot of palette. That's when I kind of started becoming a filmer on top of a skier. It was like, all right, I blow my knee. I'm still going to be in the streets. What else? I'm obsessed with clips. So it's like going to help film palette. So I filmed a lot of the clips in palette alongside Emmett and everybody else who got the, the camera girlfriend shit happens, blah, blah, blah. Go back to Utah. And in between two that year, I had like started becoming friends with like Dakota and Brolf and all the child labor, what was to become child labor. And Thomas Stone was my roommate at the U that year. I went to Woodward Copper with him as like a camper and stuff. And we're like, we're going to the U, we're going to be roommates. So that all came together. And the year after the girlfriend shit, I'm like home all summer rehabbing my knee. And that's when child labor, the strike pops up. Cause we're all like, man, we should film a video, blah, blah, blah. And that early season, uh, I think before, like the year before something Cal was put on and then like Dak was put on followed by Brolf and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, sick. All my homies are involved in like Vishnu and shit, but not everybody in labor was, but that was when like labor came together. Cause we were all kicking it. It's time to film a video. And, um, so we filmed child labor, the strike, and I was in like such a bad place from the girlfriend NBA and like the year before with the ACL, like the mental repercussions, I tried to like push it out of my head and I couldn't push it. I like pushed it out of my head, but then it just caught up to me, like right in the middle of filming the strike along with like all the ACL stuff and the girlfriend stuff. And I didn't understand that like becoming 
first off, being a filmer and a skier is like a difficult thing. And I'm finally now starting to realize how to balance it. But I was also 19 and I didn't know how to communicate very well. And man, it was like my intentions were there. And I really just wanted to be the video good, but because of all the back end stress and everything that was happening in my life, it was like, uh, I was, I was blowing it for sure. Like with how I would communicate with everybody. And it wasn't, like I said, it's not black and dry, but I played like a pretty heavy part. And, um, so whatever we film a strike, everybody's beefing with each other. I'm, like a main source of it. Cause I don't know how to communicate with people. I'm also trying to ski. And in that process is like, you know, Emmett starts telling me like, you should focus on filming. You should be a filmer. And I'm like, yo dude, like I'm a, I've skied for your company for like two or three years. Like I'm, I'm a skier. And so that's like one more stress to it where it's like, damn, I need to communicate this a little better. Oh man, this is such a rabbit hole. <laughs> but <laughs> fucking so at the end of the year, I go home for the summer and I come back and I have a house and I'm living with some homies. And I'm going to the U. So it's like my second uh it was going in my third year at the U. And I'm like a week into classes and I get told by my roommate at the time, like, yo, uh, you need to, he's like, we signed the lease without you. Like you need to go. And I'm like, what? Like, this is a living situation. Like you need to give a heads up about this. This is not like a last second thing that you put on me a week into the semester. And like I said, I was super loyal to Vishnu and I love that shit. And Emmett was like, you know, I looked up to him as like a father figure. So I go straight to Emmett and tell him what happened. He's like, yeah, you got fucked. I don't, I was like, I think I got to move back to Wisconsin. Like I can't start the semester like this and try to like scramble. Cause like the main thing is that I like, I'm, I'm a fucking nerd. I care about my grades. It's like, if I'm going to go to a university and shit, like I'm going to hold it down, especially if I'm a film student, like there's no reason to fuck up as a film student. <clears throat> and he disagreed with me on that aspect of things. So anyways, I, he's like, you don't have to leave. I'm like, bro, I, I gotta go. I'm going to go home and work at the steel factory and get my bearings back. So I go home to Wisconsin and a couple months later after that uh troll hogan opens and i'm like on my old vishnu's like the gem one vishnu's because that's the only pair of skis i had left and i hit up Emmett. i'm like granted i'm still under the understanding that i'm like you know yeah like we had a difficult year blah blah, blah. like i'm riding for vishnu like because uh they had hit me up like the year before and were like, what skis do you want for next year? And I told them. And at that point I was like, I had like gotten two pairs and they, they were like, what pair do you want? I'm like, I'm, I'm not getting two pairs. And they're like one. And I'm like, that was like the first, like, Oh, I'm getting downgraded word. And so I'm in Wisconsin and I'm like, yo man, like, can I get my skis trolls about to open? And I get hit with the, yeah, yo, we're going to have to like, reassess everything when you get back to utah like i don't have skis to give you right now like we'll figure it out when you're back in utah that's why i was like oh man i am gonna get kicked off of this shit word and so i go to my shop and i'm like yo jason this is the deal he's like word like we can get you pro form on skis or whatever blah blah i'm like okay sick and Tried to wait it out till I got to Utah and then the Vishnu's break, like the first gen Vishnu's because I was already that season trying to stay loyal and stay on the Vishnu's. Those skis break. They're done. And then it's like, all right, man, it's fucking end of November, early December. It's like, am I getting skis? 
like I like text him and I'm like, what's up? He gives me a call. He's like, yo man, you're, you're off the team. Blah, blah, blah. I tried to be straight with you last year and everything. And you're off the team. I'm, I don't have skis to give you. And that sucked. That was like, man, fuck, like whatever it, uh, is what it is. And that was like the biggest, like, like NBA to like girlfriend incident, tearing the knee. That shit was like, so that was like the worst news I got at that point. I was like, man, fuck it. But I took it. I'm like, all right, word, whatever. I go to my shop. I'm like, yo, let's get these pro form dog. And he's like, it's too late. Uh, they ran out of pro form. I'm like, fuck dude and then it's like am i gonna quit skiing like what am i gonna do and i'm like no like i'm i don't know how to live without skiing like i already thought about that like the whole acl process like what if i don't come back from it and uh i paid full price for a pair of line blends full price 600 plus dollars and started going in like wisconsin had a early season uh snowstorm and i was getting clips and popped off and then i had filmed with a traveling circus at the end of the year before which this is the biggest part it's like where i draw the line and where i am hurt and upset at the situation is if you drop me like towards the end of the year prior or even in the middle of summer or August, September, whatever, that's one thing I can like figure out a way, but it was late enough in the next season where it's like, I'm fucked. Like I'm not hitting up any other companies. I have to buy skis full price. And I just put in four plus years of dedication and loyalty to your company. That's where I'm fucking pissed off and salty straight the fuck up so um to go on a little tangent to like explain like i don't even disagree with being dropped like seriously thank you that was i needed that and sorry to the labor homies for being difficult that year but i you know i had to figure my shit out but anyways traveling circus the year a little bit before vishnu was like first time i just like went up to Brighton and there's all these fucking tubes and I realized, and then like my homie joke, Joe Fusar calls me. He's like, there's all these tubes at Brighton. Let's go ski. We go up there the next day. And it's like the traveling circus. It's like, Will, Andy, Jake's filming everybody. I'm like, we shouldn't be here. And there's a feature and someone's like, someone's got to switch to switch this. And at that time, and to this day, that's like my favorite trick and no one was doing it. And the homie was like, Pat, that's your trick. Like do it. I did that trick. And Will was like, Hey, you want to come film for TC the rest of the week after I did that? And I was like, yeah, man. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's how I meet Will. That's like the first initial, like meet them. But like the second day or something, I'm helping move tubes and stuff. And Garrett Russell is there. And keep in mind when I went to copper as a kid, Will and Garrett Russell are like the two guest pros. So, you know, since I was 12 years old, I'm like, man, those dudes are the shit. And Garrett's like, who is this? Is this like the new line intern or something or blah, blah. And I'm like, what? No way. That was like the only time in four years that I was like, man, should I try to like get out of Vishnu? <laughs> like, no, what the fuck? And the homie Marcus sees that I have a Vishnu tat and he's like, man, a Vishnu tat. What happens if you get booted? And at that point, I'm still riding for Vishnu. And I'm like, well, let's hope that never happens. And this is like, four months before I get kicked out of that shit. You know what I mean? So fun little side story, but that's the thing. It's like, dude, I had this like opportunity and it's like, whatever. So that happens the season after buy blends, full price film 
Lupe Lupe Haggerty was at the TC shoot. That's where I meet Lupe. Lupe hits me up early season the next year. He's like, hey, man, I'm going to Minnesota. Like, you want to come on a trip? And I just got dropped, and I was debating quitting skiing, dude. And it's like, I don't think I could ever quit this shit. I'll always be a part of me. But Lupe called me, and that was like, or he DM'd me or something. And that was like the saving grace. It's like, we're fucking on, dude. Like, I'm not quitting skiing. So take, go up to Minnesota and uh, start filming. It's Owen. Dahlberg and Lupe and then later in the trip Tyler Sosnowski flies out and that was uh the video before it officially became Mill Bastards that I was filming for and hit street with Lupe that whole thing it's the video before Mill Bastards I'm blanking on what the title is and I should know it but it's the year I filmed the word is bond solo part um which was like, fuck, no, I'm not quitting skiing, dude. Like, that's not even an option. Like, if I'm going to end up in this position, like, I'm going to put it in my skiing and run with it and roll with Lupe. And then the next year for the next in going in from where it is Bond to the Slaunch year, which is the Mill Bastards to the Gavin movie, Lupe is like, yo, do you want to ride for deviation? And I'd already met Tweak and Tweak was, he's affiliated with Lion East Coast OG. I'm not even sure what his position is. I think like he's not even an East Coast rep, but the East Coast rep lets him like be the East Coast TM. But I bought Lion Blends and I told him like the whole story and he's like, we're going to figure something out. Like I can get you a discount or try to get you free lines or whatever. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like sick, man. And that was like a dream come true because obviously huge fan of line. I bought skis full price, like line skis. If I'm going to buy anything, it's like, man, I just got a couple clips in the TC. I'm buying line. And, but I was riding with Lupe and Lupe is like, come to deviation. Like I'm your TM. Like you're not going to get taken seriously at line let's he's like come here and you're skiing with me anyways and i'm like bet let's run that and i got the deviation skis and because i trusted lupe and that year i just kind of ended up because i wanted to film in wisconsin and then gavin and everybody ended up coming to me and they were filming in mill bastards but i was just absent from the mill bastards deviation thing because i was in Wisconsin and other people were coming to me and that sucked because it was so much it was so sick filming street with Lupe and Owen that year before and like everything I learned from Lupe and such a good dude and like to this day like love him and respect him and appreciate everything he's done for me but so this the Slanche year happens and then there's just some disagreements between me and Lupe and at the same time that there's a little bit of disagreements of what's going on for the next year um strictly business strictly I can't stress enough that like Lupe is the shit and I'm so thankful um Pete started tossing around like what if we got you a pair of lines <laughs> I'm like Pete Kukov because I had helped him with most gutter and I'm like man, that would be sick. And at the same time as that, I started running into Kale at the library. And um, I was like, man, shit. Like that was the first time in my life that I had to let a very close friend of mine down. And I did it shitty, man. I called Lupe was like, yo, bro, I, I can't do it anymore. Like, I'm sorry. And left. And it's like, I should have had that conversation in person and been a man. And I've been wanting him. I've been wanting to tell him this in person and the time hasn't felt right. But Lupe, I'm sorry for how I handled that. But I made a business decision that was like, man, I can get skis from line. And I can't say that I regret it because it turned into daycare. But 
you know, I wish I could have handled it better, but me and Lupe are good. No beef at all. And he's stoked me out about the video and see him around and get to ski with him and hopefully link on some spots with him this winter. But, um, yeah, that's, uh, the rest is history after that. It was like, okay, I really hope that line is my home at this point. I'm like, man, it's such a reputable company. Everybody around me is a legend or legend in the making. And some of my closest friends at this point in time. And that's the whole rabbit hole of how that came about. Hell yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Man. Uh, yeah, so shout outs to the homies that I was difficult with. It's love. We're all good now. See him around, but yeah. Dude, I've That's- said it before in the show. This is a young man's game and it has young man issues. It is just, it's good. It's just going to shake out like that sometimes. There's going to be, there's going to be issues. It's because everyone's like 18 to 30 and there's going to be issues. And, uh, man, and yeah, it's live and learn happen for a reason. And sometimes the worst thing that can happen to you is a blessing in disguise. And sometimes you have to make hard decisions. And if you're going to make the hard decisions, at least give the people who looked out for you and showed you respect, uh, their mutual respect back with like how you're handling said decisions. But if someone fucks you over, look forward and don't look back. Mm. Simple. Dude, what a story. That was interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that, it's crazy that that directly ties into the video too. Like that whole journey. Dude, 150% because it's like, yeah. I took that into word is bond and then like word is bond. It's like my labor clips like sucked, bro. They were ass. And like, I was like, because of all the shit going on, I was like acting up and trying to be on some Instagram cloud skier bullshit with some crazy kids or whatever, looking crazy, talking crazy. But I don't know. I just was like young and was like, I'm going to take a chance and do this or that and blah, blah. And it didn't work out. But, um, I took that pain of like, you know, mainly the, the moral is like, I'm, I'm sick of people telling me that I'm not a skier pissed me off more than anything. And so I took that of hearing like, you should focus on filming and put it into word is bond and slaunch it. And then running into kill at the library and daycare. And then by daycare, it was like a come to terms with it. I was like, all right, this is how it is. It's went both ways now. Like I've got him fucked over and I don't think I fucked like deviation or Lupe over, but I didn't handle it right. So now it's been like, all right, like I got kicked off and now I've left and neither of the sides feel good, man. Like I almost feel worse with how I handled it the second time around when it was like my doing. It's like, all right, whatever, like I can take this, but having to do it to someone else, that sucks. And it kind of came together for like, I took that and put it into daycare. And at that point it was like, it come to terms with it. I'm like, all right, that's life. Shit's going to happen. What do I love? I love skiing. I love video parts. And I, uh, it's time to really give this shit my all. Cause if I have the opportunity to not only film and edit, but also ski in like the first unofficial line team movie that will the entire time was like, that's not what it is. That's not what it is. That's not what it is. And then it became that I was like, this is my shot. I'm going to give it 110%. And with Will and everybody's around me, like backing and like guidance. I think I was able to come up with like my best clips ever. And I'm really proud of them. 
And it's kind of funny. It's like the whole year since getting dropped and keeping that in the back of my head, all I wanted was people was to fuck with the skiing and the clips I got. And people would be like, oh, yeah, your clips are sick, but you're filming. You're filming. You're filming. And then daycare drops yesterday. And 95% of people that have hit me up have been like, your clips are fucked. And now it's like vice versa where I'm like, what about the filming? <laughs> like, dude, like what? Like, but no, it's uh, it's just funny to look at it like that where it's like, but no, then they'll be like, I'll be like, thanks, bro. They're like, oh, and it was filmed and edited great. Like as usual or whatever. I'm like, oh, thank you. I owe a lot of that to Will. Like I said, me and Will sat down together right here. This is the... The daycare editing studio. I blurred the background out because my apartment is dirty as hell because I've just been editing nonstop for like the past month. But um, yeah, we sat down right here and we made daycare and it was a compromise. It was like, it was like, if it was up to Will, there would have been like 10 more clips cut. If it were up to me, there would have been like 10 more clips in the film, but I think because I'm like, fuck it, that goes. And he's like, no, we need to condense it down. And I think now I agree with him. Like, honestly, we it could have went either way, you know, Um, but we compromised in like the soundtrack. We compromised. It was like some songs were like, that's it. And then I was like, we need a rap song. We're using this Coops to song south three six mafia og member he's like whatever that's his least favorite say will's least favorite say is the rap song um i hate that second to last song but i think it fits in the video really well and but more <laughs> of all the story is we compromised and made this video and it's will's baby and he's the director and i helped and it's it's funny because me and Will are both uh, difficult to work with in different ways. So it's kind of funny because I came, to, I was super, I'm super particular about spots. And then Will's on like a whole new level about how particular about spots and everything he is like, cause my main thing that caused a lot of stress is like, I don't want skiing to be a competition. I don't want to make a street video where everybody just does the, best trick they can on a rail and four people hit the same rail i want it to be as new and fresh for every shot in the video as possible and then will takes that to a new level and it was a difficult process coming to terms with how he went about it because it was like man he really cares about the spots like it's everything but like i said in the new schoolers interview I shouldn't have ever questioned him. It's uh, it was difficult, and yeah, we could have got more clips, but like, would it have had the same impact if we weren't as on it about spots? No, it it wouldn't have. And yeah, end of the day, we we owe it all to Will. We owe it all to Will. He seriously, like, so indebted to him forever for everything that i've learned and being difficult but for the right reasons and yeah that's daycare mm. that's word i feel like that's a very natural conclusion to the episode and <laughs> uh and uh yeah you want to leave us off with anything any words of wisdom any final thoughts uh i feel like that was just a beautiful little bow on the end of it we're already also two hours in, so. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know. I uh, really don't mean to offend or upset anybody. And end of the day, if you love something, continue doing it. And uh, yeah, man, just just stoked and blessed to be in the position that I'm in. And it's something that with someone who was given a second chance in the ski industry. Um, I won't ever take it for granted. 
Hell yeah, dude. All right. Patrick P ring. Thank you very much for being here. I appreciate it. That was, that was awesome. Cheers, man. I wasn't planning on going into all that, but your uh, questions brought me there. (laughs) 